Hi everybody, fiscal policy is a macroeconomic policy that involves changes to government spending and taxation in order to influence aggregate demand in the economy. So very much a demand side macro policy here. It can be expansionary in nature, expansionary fiscal policy, which is changes to GNT that aims to boost aggregate demand, or it can be contractionary in nature, contractionary fiscal policy, which are changes to GNT in order to reduce AD. So why would a government look to use expansionary fiscal policy and boost aggregate demand? Well, the first reason is to increase economic growth. So if growth is sluggish, or if the economy is in a recession, a boost to growth might be necessary. If AD increases, we get that increase in growth. It could also be to reduce unemployment, cyclical unemployment, again, in a recession. If the aggregate demand shifts to the right, there is gonna be more goods and services being produced in the economy. Firms are therefore gonna need more workers to produce that output. Labor is a derived demand, therefore employment will rise, unemployment will fall. Another reason in theory would be to increase demand pull inflation. When AD shifts to the right, we get more inflation, demand pull inflation. So in theory, we can say that. In reality, not really, because it's not the government's job to control inflation. But in theory, we can say it. So if the inflation rate is below target, maybe a slight increase in inflation will be desirable through expansionary fiscal policy. And then the last reason really isn't to do with aggregate demand. It's more to do with the redistribution of income, to reduce income inequality. So for example, via government spending on welfare benefits, which is a top up of income for those on lower incomes, but also a reduction in tax rates for those in lower income tax bands, or maybe a reduction in regressive taxation will help to reduce income inequality in the economy. What about contractionary fiscal policy? Well, this is all about reducing AD. Why might the government want to do that? Well, the first reason would be to cool the economy down. If the economy is overheating, we have high rates of demand upon inflation. Reductions in AD via fiscal policy can help to reduce demand pull inflation. Again, in theory, we can say that, not in reality, because it's a central bank's job to control inflation and hit the inflation target. So in reality, the major reason would be number two, contractionary fiscal policy, not really for an AD effect, but to reduce the budget deficit, to reduce the amount of borrowing that the government is doing yearly, and therefore to reduce the overall level of debt that the government has. So that'd be the primary reason to try and control government finances. But another reason, again, to redistribute income, again, not linked to AD here, to redistribute income, this could be via higher taxation on the rich, um, to gain that money and then to redistribute it via income top-ups for the poor. So it could be to reduce income inequality in society. And another reason would be maybe to reduce the current account deficit. So if AD is reduced because of contractionary fiscal policy, incomes will be lower in the economy and therefore there'll be less sucking in of imports, less sucking in of imports going on. So less expenditure on imports, and ceteris paribus, that will reduce a current account deficit, a trade deficit, basically. Okay, now let's go into more detail with expansionary fiscal policy. I'm gonna focus now on this side of fiscal policy. There is a video later in this playlist where I go into detail about contractionary fiscal policy. The actual policies are just gonna be the opposite of these that I talk about, but the pros and cons of contractionary fiscal policy is discussed in detail later. So watch that video if you wanna see that side of the coin. Right, let's look at expansionary fiscal policy examples. Um, so we can see that all of these policies will aim to boost aggregate demand. And if we go to our diagram that I've drawn, we can see the increase in AD that expansionary fiscal policy aims to bring about. And from this diagram, we can see the effects that I've already talked about here in blue. We can see the higher economic growth from Y1 to Y2, the reduction in unemployment linked to that increase in economic growth. We can see the higher demand pull inflationary pressure as well. But can you also see that I've added on the multiplier effect? And that's something you can always talk about when we uh, bring in the idea of expansionary fiscal policy. And that's the notion that an increase in aggregate demand will lead to higher incomes in the economy. That will lead to more spending, which is more AD and more incomes and more spending. We get into this virtual cycle of spending and income, spending and incomes, right? And therefore the end result is an even higher increase in AD and economic growth at Y3 as opposed to Y2. So we can link the multiplier to our expansionary fiscal policies. But the policies themselves, let's focus on the tax policies. We could have a reduction in income tax. The government could cut income tax. Now we've learned about progressive income tax systems. So we can be far more precise than just saying that. So it could be a cut in income tax uh, for those in the higher income tax brackets. It could be a reduction in income tax rates for those on the lower uh, income tax brackets. It could be a widening of the tax-free allowance. It could be a widening of the tax ban. So we can be very precise in what we mean by an income tax cut. But in theory, what that will do, it will increase disposable income of households in the economy. That will increase the marginal propensity for them to consume. 
and therefore increase consumption in the AD equation and boost AD that way. We could see a reduction in corporation tax, a different tax here might be cut. Uh, corporation tax is a tax on business profit. So if corporation tax is cut, that's going to increase retained profit for businesses. That could increase their marginal propensity to invest, increase investment in the AD equation and boost AD that way. We could also see, if stick with tax policies, a reduction in regressive taxation. Maybe that's another one we can write down. So for example, a reduction in VAT. Regressive taxes burden the poor more than they do the rich. They take a greater proportion of the income of the poor than they do of the rich, as we've learned in my prior video. And therefore, if a regressive tax like VAT is cut, it could increase disposable income for the poor more than for the rich. And because the poor have a very high marginal propensity to consume, it could boost consumption in AD that way. But also, if we look at the government spending side of fiscal policy, government spending could rise very simply on healthcare, on education, on infrastructure, on public sector wages. So always be precise with a form of government spending. And that can boost G in the AD equation and therefore boost AD as well. But even though fiscal policy is a demand side policy, very much it is, it will also have a link to LRS. Certain policies could also boost long run aggregate supply and therefore boost the productive potential of the economy. This is not the intention of expansionary fiscal policy. The intention is to boost AD, but this could very much be a side effect. So you learn this as a side effect, not as an intention of expansionary fiscal policy. So here I've drawn a diagram of LRS shifting to the right. And we can see the increase in the productive potential of the economy, potential growth from YFE1 to YFE2. The same policies I've already mentioned could also boost LRAS as a side effect. A reduction in income tax, what that could do is that can incentivize the inactive in the population to become active, i.e. those outside the labor force to enter the labor force. And that could increase the quantity of labor and boost LRAS. But also for those in work, if income tax is cut, there is an incentive for them to work harder, be more productive, earn more, because they can keep more of their income as disposable income. And if that happens, productivity of labor goes up, that's an increase in the quality of labor, boosting LRAS. If corporation tax is cut, we said it's going to boost investment and therefore boost AD, but we also know that investment also boosts LRAS via an increase in the quantity and quality of capital, but also via an improvement in productive efficiency in the economy. And also increases in government spending, if we're more precise, if it's government spending on education and health, that could boost the productivity of labor and therefore boost the quality of labor and increase LRAS. But also increases in government spending on infrastructure can increase the productive efficiency in the economy, also potentially boost the quantity of capital as well. So there are links to LRAS as well, but remember, the primary focus of fiscal policy, expansionary fiscal policy, is to boost aggregate demand. This is purely a side effect. So that's good enough for this video, guys. We'll leave it there. I'm going to go into far more detail in my next video, looking at the issues of expansionary fiscal policy and some key evaluation points as well. Make sure you watch that video. I'll see you there. Thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.